Hiya, it's Zoe. So studying for my dynamics quiz I have tomorrow, I'm going to start off with the Renan Angiotensin Aldosterone System. So the Renan Angiotensin Aldosterone System is a critical regulator of blood volume and blood pressure. While the baroreceptor reflex is involved in short-term regulation of our blood pressure, our kidneys through the our AAS are involved in the long-term regulation of our blood pressure. It is for this reason that many classes of antihypertensives target the RAS to effectively reduce blood pressure. As the name implies, the RAS is comprised of three major co compounds, renin, angiotensin II, and aldosterone. Uh, these three hormones act to elevate arterial blood or arterial pressure in response to decreased blood pressure and or decreased fluid volume. So starting off with the kidneys, when you say a drop in blood pressure or a drop in fluid volume, our kidneys react to this using the inactive form of renin, which is pro-renin, which is secreted and cleaved into its active form, renin. Uh, once the renin has been released in the blood, it can act on its target angiotensinogen. So an angiotensinogen is produced in the liver and found continuously circulating in the plasma. Renin then acts to cleave the angiotensinogen into an angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 is physiologically inactive, but acts as a precursor for angiotensin 2. Uh, the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 is catalyzed by an enzyme called angiotensin converting enzyme, or ACE. ACE is fi found primarily in the vascular endothelium in the lungs and the kidney after angiotensin 1 is converted into angiotensin, angiotensin 2. It has the effect on the kidneys, adrenal cortex, arterioles, and brain by binding to angiotensin II type 1 and type 2 receptors. So most of the known uh, physiological and pathological effects of angiotensin I are angiotensin II are mediated through stimulation of the AT1 receptor. In fact, the AT2 receptor possesses functions that counteract the effects of the AT1 receptor. The balance between the AT1 and the AT2 receptors can determine the renal status in health, in health and disease. So the AT1 receptors, when it is activated, you see an increase in aldosterone, an increase in oxidative stress, pro-inflammatory, vasoconstriction, an increase in blood pressure, and usually in adults. In the AT2, you see um, increased cyclic GMP, decreased oxidative stress. It's an anti-inflammatory vasodilation and decreased blood pressure, and usually seen in uh, fetuses and infants. I mean, you do see them in adults. It's just typically very low. Uh, recall that the RAAS is activated during times of low blood volume and hypotension. This activation of the RAAS wants to correct this imbalance by increasing the blood pressure and hypotension. This is where aldosterone comes to the rescue. Aldosterone causes an increase in salt and water reabsorption into the bloodstream from the kidneys, thereby producing an increase blood volume and sodium levels, which leads to an increase in cardio out, cardiac output as the heart has to work harder to pump uh, to increase the volume throughout the body, which leads to a subsequent increase in blood pressure. In healthy individuals, the negative feedback mechanism will then be activated by the increase in blood pressure to decrease the, uh, your renin levels in your plasma and allow the body to maintain a normal BP. So how do we target the pathway to reduce your blood pressure? So an angiotensin uh, like receptor blocker would only block the A1, AT1 because AT2 is only seen in like infants and fetuses and there's a lot more AT1 receptors than adults. They're highly prevalent. 
So some medications. So renin inhibitors prevent renin from cleaving angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1, thus preventing the activation. So that's like one of the very first things. And the only drug in, uh, approved um, in the United States for this is Alaskarin or Tecturna. It has a very low bioavailability of 2.5%, but it has a higher affinity for renin that compensates for its low bioavailability. Um, it's used for hypertension, of course. Um, it is an uh, efficacious antihypertensive agent with a similar effect to a lot of the other RRA medication, R R A A S medications. It's the only approved uh, treatment of hypertension in this drug class. So some adverse effects is mild GI symptoms, headache, dizziness, fatigue, hyperkalemia, and an increased serum creatinine. Contraindications, uh, pregnancy, con competent use of ACE inhibitors and ARBs in patients with diabetes, void in patients with uh, creatinine clearance less than 60 mLs per minute, some drug interactions, it's furosemide. So alaskarin reduces the absorption of furosemide by 50%. Some counseling points, I do try to avoid eating high fat foods because it's very uh, lipophilic, so it'll just, it won't get absorbed into your body because it's very lipophilic. So talking about ACE inhibitors, they block the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, thus producing a similar antihypertensive effect to the renin inhibitors by stopping the activation of this pathway. So ACE inhibitors usually end in a pril. So we have benzapril, captopril, enolapril, uh, fosinopril, lisinopril, uh, loxapril, uh, Moxapril, hmm. Parandapril, Quinapril, Ramapril, and Chenjolapril. Uh, there isn't an, an extensive list of ACE inhibitors, but they usually do end in a pril. Um, some clinical indications so, hypertension, acute myocardial infarction heart failure, and diabetic nephropathy. Uh, see if there's anything else I can add here. Um, ACE inhibitors dilate the blood vessels to improve your blood flow, and this helps um, decrease the amount of work your heart must do, which is very efficacious for heart failure. Diabetic nephropathy is a common complication of type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Over time, poorly controlled diabetes can cause damage to blood vessel clusters in your kidneys that filtrate the waste from your blood. This can lead to kidney damage and cause high blood pressure. Uh, so the ACE inhibitors do reduce the glomerular pressure to delay the disease progression. So some adverse effects, hypotension, synecope, which is just, I think you just like pass out, but it's only like with the first Dose, I think. Uh, hyperkalemia, increased amcreatinine, and a cough. So if you increase the bradykinin, you do see a cough. Uh, some contraindications, pregnancy, renal artery stenosis, or acute renal failure. Um, a dry cough, the dry cough um, occurs about 5 to 20% of patients. It's just an accumulation of um, not degrading the bradykinin and the uh, angiotensin converting enzyme is responsible for. So with the renal artery stenosis, um, it's the narrowing of one or more of the arteries that carry blood to the kidneys. This means that the glomerular, the GFR is largely dependent on the BP, so that a decrease in BP will lead to a, will be lead to a reduced GFR and increase the patient's risk of experiencing acute renal failure. So next I'll be talking about the angiotensin II receptor blockers. 
it is very important to remember uh, that they block the AT1 receptor, not the AT2 receptor. So these usually end in a sartin. So uh, azelsartin, uh, candesartin, oh, eprosartin, uh, erbisartin, losartin, olmosartin, telmosartin, and valsartin. Said that very fast. All right, some of the clin uh, clinical indications, hypertension, heart failure, and diabetic nephropathy. Some adverse effects, so hyperkalemia, which is uh, hyperkalemia and increased sam creatinine, and a cough, which is actually lower than ACE inhibitors. Some contraindications, pregnancy and renal artery stenosis, because it leads to, can lead to acute renal failure. So there's one more, and it's the aldosterone antagonists, which um, are e pleuronin and spironolactone. Um, there are also potassium sparing diuretics. So how does this kind of work? So recall that the aldosterone causes an increase in salt and water reabsorption uh, into the bloodstream from the kidneys, thereby producing an increase in blood volume, increased cardiac output, and an increase in blood pressure. So if you block the aldosterone, you're going to secrete more water, lower the blood volume, lower the cardiac output. By inhibiting aldosterone, we will thus see it's uh, subsequent decrease in blood volume, cardiac output, and blood pressure. Because if you take away the hormone that's important for that, you know, you just lose all of it. So clinical indications, hypertension. We already saw that, you know, if you inhibit aldosterone, you see a decrease in blood volume, which can then decrease the blood pressure. And by taking some of the strain off of the heart from an increased cardiac output, you can actually help with heart failure. Uh, these are mostly used in combination with other drugs, such as diuretics, ACE inhibitors, and ARBs. Um, some adverse effects, hyperkalemia and gynecomastia, mainly seen if you take spironolactone, and you see it in males. Contraindications with epleuronin, you can see renal impairment, type 2 diabetes mellitus with microalbuminuria. Because thiazides rapidly remove water and sodium from the body, the plasma volume may decrease, causing a drop in blood pressure. So you don't want to take thiazides with it either because you are taking something for a high blood pressure. You don't want to take something else that will just drop it even farther off the face of the earth. So that is it for... Let me see if I can remember this. Uh, renin angiotensin aldosterone system. All right. Have fun and happy studying.